One of the things I wanted for my new home lab was to be able to access it from anywhere. I like to go and sit in a coffee shop or go and sit at a picnic table in a park somewhere and be able to keep doing my work the same way I would if I was sitting at home. I wanted to do something a little bit different and use Tailscale for this lab. So what I've done is I have Tailscale on my Mac and on my work laptop and on a Raspberry Pi here that, that died in the storm. And also now I've installed it on the single node OpenShift box so that it has a Tailscale IP address and then I can just set the API address in my Etsy host file to point to the Tailscale IP of the single node OpenShift box and then I can keep resolving things and keep running operators from my laptop connecting over WireGuard back into the single node OpenShift environment. So in this video I just want to take a look at how I managed to do that and what that setup looks like because it's a pretty handy thing if you wanted to replicate it and obviously this would work if you um, if you wanted to do it on a full cluster, I just happened to be doing it on a single node OpenShift environment. But if you had a full cluster, then you could set up Tailscale on your proxy, so HA proxy VM, or maybe you've got HA proxy running in a Raspberry Pi. So you set up Tailscale there, and then you resolve the HA proxy um, IP address over Tailscale, and that will get you access to the API. So let's take a look at, at how I've set it up and how I managed to get Tailscale installed and what, what the networking looks like. So you can see here on my MacBook, I've just got the uh, host entry for the Tailscale IP address. So then on my MacBook, we can see that I have a Tailscale IP address as well. So if I ping the 36 IP address, I can reach it. And then obviously my OC commands all work as well. And there we go, we can see that I'm resolving to the API and I'm getting responses back for it. So that's happening over Tailscale. So let's take a look at what that looks like. We go over this side, we go OC, get and see. Need to reset kubeconfig. I haven't used this terminal since our last video. So in my machine configs, I've got this 80 Tailscale one. Now this isn't very complicated because all I could really do was install the package with, with the machine config. I needed to manually set up the repo. So we go OC get MC dash O YAML. So you can see all I'm doing is I'm just adding an extension here with Tailscale. So that just means, so when you put something in extensions, it's just going to try and install that RPM as an overlay in RPM OS tree. So to actually see what's happening, we need to log into the node. And we do RPM OS tree status. So we can see there that there's a layered package, Tailscale. So what we've done is we've set up the repo in here. You can see we've got the Tailscale repo. So I've just set up the Tailscale stable repo there, the normal one you would install if you're installing on Fedora. And then I went and added that machine config and that machine config went ahead and made sure that that, that uh, layer package was actually installed on the system. And then obviously reboots the nodes so that we have tail scale access. Now, as I said, you wouldn't need to install it on the OpenShift environment if you're using a full cluster. That's not necessary because you would just install it on your whatever's running HA proxy. So, you know, you may be using a Raspberry Pi, so easier to install tail scale on a Raspberry Pi than it is to you know, try and get it into an OpenShift environment. But if you are just using single node, this is pretty handy um, to be able to run it all on the node and then not need an external HA proxy VM or a, a Raspberry Pi or something else, another device in the environment. So then if we check the IP addresses that are on my node, we can see that we have the Tailscale IP there. So uh, the, the other thing you need to do is make sure the Tailscale service is started. So I did try to do this with machine config as well, but if you just um, enable the service on the node, you don't actually need to have a machine config. It'll just stay running. So all I did was systemctl enable dash dash now tail scale d, and that ensures it starts every time. So there's nothing in RPM OS tree that's overriding those custom services that we've added. So um, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool way of, of getting things set up and running on the single node environment. And I've actually done upgrades on this OpenShift environment as well. So when the version of RPM OS tree changes, it's not removing that layered package, it's staying installed. 
And I think um, I think you you do need to have the machine config with the extensions to specify the, the package you want to have installed. But other than that, just adding the repo manually and then um, starting the systemd service manually is all I had to do. So once you have the node on the Tailscale network and you have your laptop on the Tailscale network, it's it's really simple then. Everything just works. There's nothing else that's really required. So we can just see if I do OC get CO, we can do everything we would normally be able to do. Check for upgrades. So there's an upgrade that, that we can kick off there. So the other complication that brings is that what Tailscale does is it sets up a entry in your resolve.com file. So we can see that my my name server is 100.100.100.100 now. Now I can't resolve things over that network. So when it tries to resolve OAuth, for example, it's not going to be able to. So what we need to do, we go back over to this pane, and it'll make a big get. So what we need to do is we need our DNS pod to know where to find the actual DNS server so that it can resolve all of these IP addresses. So what we need to do is we need to edit the configuration for the DNS operator. So you can see there that we do OC edit DNS operator OpenShift IO default. And then down here in our upstream, so we're going to leave it in sequential and we're going to use the first upstream object as a network type and we're going to set it to the actual DNS server that we want the DNS pods to use. So if I remove that then it would use my systemresolve.conf by default and then that 100.100.100.100 IP address can't resolve the internal address space that I have for my network which means that the OAuth operator, the console operator, everything will fail because they won't be able to find each other. So we just need to set our internal DNS server as the first entry in the upstreams. We could remove the resolve.com find, but it's good as just a backup. You know, um, it doesn't need to be able to resolve console and OAuth to do an upgrade, for example. So we'll leave that there as a backup, but we want to leave it in sequential and then have the first entry as our DNS server so that it's always going to use our DNS server first. And then we can see that that actually works when we do something like RSH into the authentication operator and we do a dig on the OAuth, we can see that it resolves it fine using the, the DNS pod because the DNS pod is now able to look up from the correct DNS server. So that's the other thing we need to set up when we're using tail scale. Let's just make sure that DNS is all going to be set up correctly. So that's all I wanted to show today, just a quick video on how to use tail scale with your single node OpenShift environment, if that's something you wanted to do. So you can have the option of not being physically in your house, but using a secure WireGuard network in the back end to facilitate any of the work that you might like to, to get done remotely. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll talk to you in the next video.